My guest today needs very little in the way of an introduction, a man who has guided his team to the MLS playoffs in each of the four seasons he's been in charge, the fifth longest tenured coach currently in the league, the king, El Rey de Providence Park. It's the one and only Giovanni Savarese. It's an exciting time for Portland Timbers fans as they prepare for Saturday's Western Conference Final against Real Salt Lake. We'll be discussing that game and much, much more. Que golazo begins right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Que Golazo. Thank you so much for being part of the family. We are on Twitter, Que Golazo Pod, YouTube.com forward slash Que Golazo, CBS Sports, and your CBS Sports app, as well as Apple Podcasts and so much more. Right then, I've been covering this league for too many years, even before CBS Sports Illustrated. And finally, puedo hablar con el campeón, Giovanni Savarese. Gio, how are you, my friend? Very good. Thank you. It's a pleasure to uh, be able to connect with you. Absolutely. Gio, esto va a ser en inglés, so it's fine. We're going to just uh, be, we'll be kind to our English speaking uh, audience. But uh, as I mentioned, it's an honor to talk to you. Uh, very excited about, you know, what you guys will be doing ahead this weekend. The first uh, question, let's get straight into it. Uh, the season overall, you know, obviously after coming back from MLS's back tournament and, and COVID and everything, you ended fourth, 17 wins second best offensive record in the West. How do you feel the season went, Gio? Interesting question. Uh, it was uh, a, a, a season in which had a very difficult uh, beginning, ups and downs. Um, we participated in the CONCA Champions. We had some very good moments. We had some difficult moments going to America and playing there was uh, in the Ciudad de Mexico. It was very difficult, but it was a great experience for, for the club. We went through, went through injuries. Uh, we went through moments in which uh, you know we didn't play well. Some other moments uh, that in which we did much better. But then towards the end, uh, I will say from the middle in July all the way to the end, uh, we found ourselves. We were able to become stronger. Uh, we got players back from injuries, and, and and at the end we became a stronger team. And we had a very uh, in strong ending of the season. Uh, so we felt very good about going into the playoff, and we are here right now. Do you think that it was easier, because you're mentioning external competition outside MLS, do you think it helped that you just had one focus uh, as you closed the season? Did that help you, do you think? Yes, I mean, uh, our desire was to try to make it all away. Uh, mm -hmm. We had the dream to be able to uh, be the club in MLS that uh, won uh, the new era of the CONCA Champions. Uh, but we had a, a tough matchup against America. We battled, we tried. Uh, but I think after um, being able to focus only in MLS, especially when we had the players back, uh, then it made it uh, easier and better for us to be on, on one direction. But it took a little bit more than that because we, we were able to um, go in, uh, out of our path at, at some moments. We, we didn't get some good results, I will say, towards June Um, in, in, in May. Uh, so it required a lot from the group to, to push it together, but I'm very proud of uh, what we have achieved so far. Absolutely. And obviously that leads up to the conference final against Real Salt Lake, Providence Park, Saturday, 6.30 Eastern. It's going to be a really intriguing one. Uh, I'm expecting goals here, Gio. Portland scored 60 goals in 36 matches. That's third in MLS. Real Salt Lake, 55 Uh, I'm expecting goals. I'm sure you're hoping for a clean sheet too, but how do you see this game going into the weekend? Yeah, every, everything, as you said, you know, uh, shows that this game should have a lot of goals. Uh, but if we have learned something in soccer for the years that we've been... It'll be the yeah, opposite. Yeah, so, <laughs> soccer, soccer brings you always new challenges and every game is so different from the other that, uh, you know, th this, this game will require a lot from, from, from us. Um, the Real Salt Lake is a very good team. Uh, despite of this uh, Cinderella type of talk that is being out there, they are a, a strong team. They are a very good team. There's a reason why they got to where they are right now. And uh, we're not naive not to prepare ourselves very, very well to play against a good team. So um, this may be a silly question, but is home advantage uh, truly an advantage, do you think, specifically for a team like Portland? Uh, their Timbers Army is so, so powerful, so energetic. Do you think that gives you an advantage uh, this weekend? Only if you, we, we know how to capitalize on that. I mean, it can become an advantage uh, in the sense of, you know, you have your fans, you can have good energy, you, you know your surroundings. 
uh, but also can play the other way. Um, so we we are the in, in, on the field on the pitch. Uh, we are the ones that have to dictate that if that is going to matter or not. Uh, and, and and the most important thing is to focus uh, our mind exactly in where it needs to be focused, which is in the game more than anything that surrounds the game. Spoken like a true South American. I'm Peruvian, you're Venezuelan. Home advantage. It all depends on how you use it. Well said. Let's talk a little bit about. Your squad here, obviously, uh, Felipe More led, uh, you know, the, the season 11 goals as well in 31 league matches. Seba Blanco, of course, we know how good he is in terms of being an assist king. Dairon Aspria will be missing. Obviously, the red card was upheld. How are you going to plan on his absence? Such an important player, of course. Yeah, of course, uh, we have two players right now that uh, we're probably going to miss in this match. Um, even though Seba keeps on pushing and pushing, and you never know uh, what he's uh, uh, capable of doing. Uh, Asprilla is uh, definitely not going to be part of this game. Um, and uh, these are two very important players that make our team be a better team. But it's, if there's one thing about uh, the Portland Timbers, it, it's, it's the, the strength is the group. And everybody knows that here and everybody uh, practice and works so hard for the opportunity. So whoever is going to get the opportunity to start or to play or to get into the match, uh, I'm very, you know, I'm for sure that they will be ready to be able to provide what we need. Going back a little bit about the MLS is back tournament. Uh, you know, what did that mean at that time? It was such a tricky situation uh, everybody was in the dark really right in terms of the pandemic and everything the league did a tremendous job by just creating a tournament obviously the teams yourself coaching everybody involved deserves applause for that what did that mean in that moment do you think uh for doing what you did during that time yeah first of all what a, what a year you no know, beginning in preseason then uh, the lockdown then not knowing what was going to happen are we going to play or not and, and as you mentioned major league soccer uh, having the idea to uh, create this uh, MLS back tournament uh, in which, you know, was uh, the, the first sport to be able to compete. Um, so it was a model for many other leagues, for, for uh, the, the, the Champion League in Europe and, and other leagues. So for us, uh, it was, uh, you know, entering into it, uh, you know, something that we, we had to find out a little bit more, learn more about it but something that we wanted to make sure that uh, it mattered to us. Um, and we wanted to, you know, uh, to give our best and, and do the best that we could to give happiness to people in Portland. And we also uh, felt that uh, winning this tournament, it, you know, who knows if it's going to exist another MLS back tournament. So we wanted to be unique, remember uh, by winning, you know, that very difficult tournament. And it was incredible. I mean, uh, being there with so many teams, uh, being in one hotel, everything that we lived inside there for 45 days, uh, it, it was an unbelievable experience, very interesting. And we're glad that we we're able to, to bring the trophy. Yeah, I'm sure it, it felt like an international competition, right? Everybody in just one, one scenario and you all fought for something. Do you use that kind of journey and also, you know, taking the Timbers to the MLS Cup final in your first season in charge. Are, do you draw from those experiences heading into Saturday? Does it matter to you even if you didn't have all those achievements? How, how much do you use that experience in playoff competition? No, I think that the only thing that we can say is that we are capable of achieving those type of situations and, and get to, 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 to win you know, trophies. Uh, this is what this team is capable of doing. Uh, but we cannot leave out of the honors or the you know, good times of the past. We need to create our good times and good moments uh, in the present. And, um, but, but we need to understand that we're capable of that. And, and this uh, coming Saturday is a, is a good uh, opportunity for us to make sure that we arrive there with uh, a lot of you know, home, homelessness, uh, with a lot of work ethic, and get the job done. Giovanni Savarese, before you go, I do have a few questions, two more, and then we'll say goodbye to you as you have a very big weekend ahead of yours. Thank you for being part of Que Golazo. The first one is this. I ask all my Peruvians in MLS the same thing. Uh, Raul Rodríguez in Seattle, Andy Polo in Portland. How many Venezuelans are in Portland, Giovanni Savarese? Are there a lot? Is there a big community there? Yeah, there's a pretty decent community here right. in, in Portland. So, you know, and I see more and more sometimes, uh, you know, <laughs> that uh, there, there's more, at least there's a couple of places to buy arepas. Uh, you That's know, what I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I'm, you know, putting together, you know, uh, my order for Ayacas, uh, you know, for the for, for December. Uh, so I'm glad that we have that. And on, in, in the team, we have a couple of people working in the organization that are from Venezuela. And on the team, we have Pablo Bonilla and, and Renzo Zambrano of course. Uh, that are from Venezuela as well. So, you know, we, we're proud to, to have, you know, some people around. Lavino Tinto, I love it. I love it. I I can't let you go without. What What are your thoughts on Peckerman now becoming the new head coach of Venezuela? That's to me incredible. I think uh, it is important to make sure that all of us uh, that want to see the Lavino Tinto uh, be successful, we have to make sure that we give uh, all the support uh, that Peckerman needs. Um, you know, he has uh, tons of experience. Uh, he brought in a staff uh, also with experience. Um, and uh, the only thing that we can do is give good energy, give everything that we have to support him and hope that he's going to do very well uh, because that's what we want. We want to see Arvino Tinto hopefully one day in the in a World Cup. The best of luck to Lavino Tinto uh, in the future. The best of luck to Gio Savarese and, of course, Portland Timbers as they head in the Western Conference Finals against Real Salt Lake. Gio, muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you for being here. Un placer. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Make sure to follow us on Kegolazo Pod on Twitter, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and of course, CBS Sports and your CBS Sports app. We will see you next time.